Let us start uh, lecture 34. Uh, the course is uh, corrosion failures and analysis and we will discuss uh, several aspects of erosion corrosion. We have started already uh, uh, discussing erosion corrosion and today we will talk about uh, some of the characteristics of erosion corrosion as well as factors that favor erosion corrosion. Now, the course is Corrosion Failures Analysis and Lecture 34, Topic uh, Erosion Corrosion. We have already seen that uh, there are couple of variations in erosion corrosion like uh, one set called uh, uh, cavitation, another set that is fretting corrosion and of course, there is there are several aspects of erosion corrosion due to the flow of fluid inside a pipeline or a system. Okay. So, now uh, we will talk about uh, characteristics of erosion corrosion. So, these are basically general characteristics, we will separately discuss uh, cavitation as well as fretting, but the general characteristics of erosion corrosion, uh, if it re relates to the flow of fluid, uh, one is it is an accelerated attack. In fact, uh, uh, the attack is very unusual it at times uh, and it does not match with the laboratory scale test, because in laboratory scale test what we do, we do mostly uh, in, a, in, a, in a very static condition the corrosion analysis uh, of a material, but when erosion corrosion comes in that erosion factor comes in due to the uh, speed of that particular the flow of that particular fluid, uh, uh, the damage becomes very aggressive. Okay. So, uh, and at the same time uh, erosion corrosion always talks about uh, uh, the increased attack uh, due to the flow and if there is a decrease in attack due to the flow, which does not fall under the erosion corrosion. Okay. Uh, for example, if we increase the flow, sometimes uh, there would be a situation that corrosion reduces. For example, inhibitors, if we add inhibitors, the speed of that particular fluid would allow those inhibitors to reach to the intricate corners of the metal surface and it will give uh, preventing action uh, against corrosion. Okay. So, that will not fall under uh, erosion corrosion. Sever similarly, erosion corrosion will not be considered if uh, the flow actually reduces crevice and pitting corrosion. So, that will not come under erosion corrosion. Whenever there is a increase in attack uh, due to the flow we consider it to be erosion corrosion. So, this is an, inter, uh, increase, uh, an accelerated attack of the metal surface of metal or alloy surface. In fact, in that regard uh, uh, as I have mentioned as I mentioned that uh, if we do a stagnant test let us say uh, 316 SS this is the steel, uh, if we use a stagnant uh, condition and the medium is let us say the slurry which contains Fe SO4 plus uh, H2SO4, this is the acid strong acid. So, that case uh, uh, if we see at a 60 degree Celsius temperature and if we see with respect to temperature, at 60 degree temperature even the attack would be very small okay, on that metal surface 316, but if it is uh, moving fluid, then this is damage in terms of MPY or depth of attack, depth of attack in terms of MPY, MPY is milli inch per year. Okay. 
so that time uh, that attack goes very high okay so it can go uh, even up to around 450 for 4500 mpy it can reach okay so that is the level of attack due to that erosion factor now uh, in that aspect uh, let me just uh, show you one example uh, of erosion corrosion that happens in a chrome pipe fitting okay so let me just uh, share that uh, particular set of images which i have taken uh, now if we check this so this is the chrome fitting and we are our concern portion is this portion okay where the water comes out now if we check that portion that portion is this one now uh, there is a small faucet which is fitted to that uh, pipe fitting and uh, that allows the water to have a very nice smooth flow and the impingement effect is reduced to a great extent. If we remove that and if the water flow is heavy, then uh, it can impinge on the surface of uh, human body, but uh, if it is there, then that reduces that impingement and makes the water flow very smooth. Now, uh, if we take that particular portion out, uh, inside that we have a plastic grid and there is a washer. Uh, rubber washer also fitted to that and uh, I just opened that and it was almost about say it is it is to be clean time to time that faucet I opened that and I saw that uh, on top of that plastic grid it's a basically there are small small particles and you could see that uh, those particles are quite big and few millimeters and uh, the particles are uh, red colored and then I tried to uh, uh, put little pressure with my finger and then saw that those particles are breaking, those are flocculated and it is not a solid uh, that 1 millimeter or 2 millimeter solid particles. So, inside each one, inside each one if we take that, so inside each one uh, if we take and then uh, press with your finger it will uh, crumble into pieces and then you will see that small small sand particles that is quite natural because uh, it is it's a filter water but still that sand particles can come in and this particular grid is give, put just to uh, trap those, those sand particles falling out. Now those sand particles are actually covered with iron rust is basically nothing but uh, red rust which is iron oxide rust and this is inside is basically iron pipe. Now those uh, rust is forming and those rust is, is covering that small small tiny sand particles and getting accumulated on top of that grid. Now I opened it and then I could uh, see the inside part I took a photograph uh, from after opening I took a photograph like this, this way I took a photograph okay. and that photograph is given here. Right? Now you could sense that water is flowing out at a high speed and the sand particles are also circulating around it and the water is actually changing direction, it is coming like this and it is changing direction of course there will be turbulence and that turbulence as well as those particles they will be moving at a, at, a, at a good speed and that that will have a kind of micro machining kind of effect on the metal surface and this is oxygenated uh, metal surface because it is it is open to air. So, that is what it is we can say this aerated water and this aeration of water there are oxygen and then those particles are actually scrubbing the surface because of that erosion effect and due to scrubbing iron oxide is forming. Okay. And we know that what are the reactions, so I can write those reaction O2 plus Fe plus H2O, it forms FeOH whole 2. Okay. So, now I can make it half, so this is the reaction, in fact there are two reactions, if we break it half O2 plus H2O 
plus 2E equal to 2OH minus this is cathodic reaction cathodic and Fe minus 2E Fe plus 2 and these two react and form this and later on uh, we can also get Fe OH whole 2 it can further react and then form Fe OH whole 3 or it can form Fe 2 O 3 H 2 O. Okay. So, now this is the red rust, this is the ferric oxide, hydrated ferric oxide. So, those actually rust and there could be other rust also Fe O O H. Uh, so, this rust has a several uh, variations alpha, gamma, beta. So, these are the variations. So, those can also form, but those are actually iron rust. Now, that is forming because of this chemical, electrochemical reaction. At the same time, we have a scrubbing effect because of those sand particles and turbulence created when the water is changing direction. And the turbulence will be high because this is a grid and that grid is actually stopping the water flow, making it smooth flow. And those grid is allowing those particles to be accumulated on top of it. Now, coming to this location you check this location, the kind of erosion effect that can experience that inner part. I will just go to the next slide. You see I have made it much bigger. You see this particular section. So, this particular section, this particular section, you see this iron is basically has formed a serrated part. The serration as well as this wall this wall as well as the top part, they are covered with the thick red rust. Okay. So, this rust is basically of course, the corrosion is happening otherwise this rust would not form, but those erosion factor due to the sand particles and water flow that is also playing a big role in the corrosion of this rust formation. So, this is one of the typical uh, erosion corrosion that is experienced. In fact, this rust formation will be much less if we just take this particular sample out put it in a stagnant stagnant the same type of water for months we will not see much of uh, rust formation because that is a stagnant condition and stagnant condition the corrosion is only the electrochemical factor is coming in no erosion factor. So, this is one uh, a reason uh, that uh, uh, erosion corrosion is uh, highly uh, aggravated uh, corrosion mode or damage mode I would say. Fine. So, let me go to where we were. So, now that means here also this is also experimental data it shows that because of the uh, movement this is erosion corrosion and here it is only uh, corrosion which is stagnant and this is moving, moving fluid. So, this is one of the characteristics of erosion corrosion. The second characteristic we can say that whenever there is an erosion, erosion corrosion, we will have a directionality of damage. For example, if we take a condenser pipe, uh, not condenser pipe, you can say uh, it is a, a heat exchanger pipe if you take. So, let us say this is the wall of that heat exchanger pipe. Now, defect starts forming and we have let us say the fluid is or the liquid or the electrolyte is flowing this way, this is a electrolyte flow and the damage takes place like this fine. And let us say this is a kind of surface which has a layer of oxide which is passive layer. So, that means, this was my this dotted line was my initial metal surface and now the damage has taken place and you could see that this kind of forms is actually having a sort of directionality. So, you see every time it is in an inclined uh, way where the attack is developing because the fluid flow is actually electrolyte flow is going this way 
fine. So, that is the directionality. So, erosion corrosion has directional nature and this is nothing but on the damage surface. Now, coming to uh, other factors like this can be uh, this erosion corrosion can happen with in a in a wet condition or in a dry in a dry condition you know. So, the uh, erosion corrosion instead of erosion corrosion I can simply say E C. Okay. So, this erosion corrosion can happen in both dry medium or wet medium. So, now coming to the variation whether we can have it in dry medium. For example, if hot air going, hot air is passing through a pipeline. So, then hot air can oxidize, oxidize the surface and this oxidized surface can get uh, removed. So, the so this this surface can get removed due to the erosion factor and then erosion corrosion or corrosion can take place. Now, in case of weight of course, whenever there is aqueous aqueous medium and this factor will be uh, much more aggressive if it is a slurry. Slurry means uh, which is a thicker uh, fluid or thicker liquid which contains a uh, uh, lot of dust particles. So, the dust particles could be a small small metal fines or anything else. For example, in the example what I showed uh, just now that uh, erosion corrosion of uh, pipe fitting uh, chrome pipe fitting. So, that is basically those tiny sand particles. So, those are actually giving much more aggressive erosion corrosion effect. So, this is uh, uh, the erosion corrosion in wet as well as dry condition. Now, E c which is erosion corrosion is if we talk consider the material aspect. So, there are aspects like hard materials. soft materials and in case of hard materials there could be uh, passivating or non passivating. Here also we can have both passivating as well as non passivating. Okay. So, uh, both uh, almost all the materials uh, uh, and the metallic materials they can be susceptible to erosion corrosion of course, the degree would be different. Uh, now, uh, if we talk about hard materials uh, the erosion corrosion effect would be uh, much less compared to soft material. Hard materials example is uh, carbon steel uh, let then we can have stainless steel. titanium, we can have uh, nickel. So, those cases out of that this one and this one even this one they are strongly passivating metal. Metals or alloys, nickel based super alloys or titanium alloys those are very strong and hard materials. Now, carbon steel they may not passivate uh, in a normal situation, uh, but uh, if we have a uh, like stainless steel because stainless steel passivate because of the chromium, but carbon steel does not passivate quick quite easily, uh, but still it can passivate it passivate if it finds a suitable environment like the pH. High pH medium carbon steel also passivate like uh, rebar in the rebar condition uh, the rebar maintains the passive pH of the order of around 12.5 to 13. 
So, in that pH actually carbon steel which is nothing but a low medium carbon or low carbon steel which passivates. But uh, stainless steel, titanium, nickel even in neutral medium it can passivate. So, so those cases, so this is I can term it as a non passivating. So, non passivating. So, now out of that uh, if we consider the passivating kind of metal they are depending on the passive layer strength okay that erosion corrosion factor can be highly uh, felt or it can also be reduced okay so for example in case of titanium titanium it has titanium oxide which is a very very adherent strong passive layer so that's what in case of titanium we have E C effect is is very minimal, very minimal. But uh, uh, stainless steel, uh, let's say three one six or three zero four, three zero three one six it contains molybdenum. Molybdenum increases E C resistance. Fine. Now, 304, so that means if we compare between this two and this two, this one will have this one will have higher E C tendency, but this one would have low E C tendency, this particular part 316, three, compared if we compare 316 and 304. Now, uh, in case of passivating metal, uh, the passive layer strength as I have said that passive layer strength would decide. So, the passive layer strength decides strength uh, as well as uh, its bonding character as well as and interface bonding. For example, if we have a metal surface, this is my uh, passive layer. This interface, which is very important, if interface is porous, then that passive layer can get knocked off due to the erosion factor. And uh, this is interesting. For example, if it is a passive metal, let us say uh, because of some reason, a local point is chipped off because of the erosion effect. Now, we have this particular zone, small zone, this is now, this is the passive zone, passive layer and this is a small zone which is now exposed to the uh, electrolyte and then if it is a strongly passivating metal, then immediately as another passive layer would form okay. and in the second stage some other places passive layer can be broken. Okay, so, like that the second stage we have so now we have passive layer like this so now this particular section is open so here also some passive layer would form again fine. Now, uh, if this layer again knocks off, this layer again knocks off then again uh, there will be another dip here. Like this, so now this is the passive layer, so here we have passive there, but now this zone will be forming another passive zone like this. So, like that way dissolution keeps on happening due to the formation of passive layer and then breaking of passive layer due to the erosion effect. So, now the passive layer strength if it is strong then it does not get chipped away very easily and that also depends on the velocity. Velocity would be a guiding factor as well as 
uh, whether it is a clean water or it is a clean electrolyte or uh, uh, full of slurry and if it is a slurry the situation would be different. Okay. Now, for example, uh, if it is uh, uh, a slurry and uh, then uh, uh, for example, if it is uh, considered the velocity, so velocity factor we will discuss uh, in a while, we need to give some data how the velocity factor uh, uh, changes the cavitation corrosion, uh, sorry changes the erosion corrosion fine. So, but uh, uh, velocity is important if it is a high velocity the breaking of uh, those passive layer can be easy. Now, coming to uh, soft material uh, that can also be passivating or non passivating like uh, example, example is like copper, aluminum, uh, even lead. Okay. So, those are uh, kind of soft metal. Okay. So, those soft metal or alloys like brass, brass is little harder than copper the because it is a solid solution strengthening effect is coming because of the addition of zinc in it. Now, that could be also passivating or non passivating type like copper can also passivate, uh, aluminum is of course, a passivating strongly passivating metal uh, aluminum oxide forms, lead can also passivate. Uh, for example, in H2SO4 medium, if it is a dilute H2SO4, lead does not, it lead immediately passivate, it forms lead sulphate. And, but if it is a strong uh, sulfuric acid, then lead sulphate that forms that dissolves in, in a strong sulfuric acid medium, lead sulphate dissolves and that actually it aggravates uh, erosion corrosion. So, we will talk about that. So, there also we can have a passivating and non passivating kind of situation. And now, soft material the effect of erosion corrosion would be much higher because, uh, uh, because that. Uh, erosion factor would be much higher uh, on soft material. The material removal can be very fast, but if it is passivating then material removal uh, in case of soft metal also reduces. For example, aluminum it is a very strongly passivating metal. So, erosion corrosion effect would be much less in case of aluminum. Now, uh, uh, if we compare uh, let us say uh, in case of copper as well as lead. The two examples we can have the copper and brass, let us say these two things and if they are put up in uh, aerated, aerated uh, NaCl solution and it is a flowing system and there uh, uh, if, if the flow happens this one has a higher EC uh, resistance compared to this. So, that means higher AC resistance and lower AC resi resistance. Interestingly, uh, it relates to the passive layer or the oxide that, that the layer forms due to the reaction with the medium. Now, here we have Cu Cl2, Cu Cl2, uh, which is a kind of uh, a very uh, dark uh, yellow, a uh, black yellow brown film, yellow brown film, and here we have CO, which is uh, a dark gray film. Fine. So, now if we compare the resistance offered by these two films, this one offers much more resistance to erosion corrosion. So, resistance to erosion corrosion would be very high, okay. I can say high and this one gives a low resistance to E C. So, that is what uh, this brass would have a higher resistance to erosion corrosion compared to copper. Now, even lead we can have an example lead, this lead if we have dilute let us say dilute uh, lead pipe. So, dilute H2SO4 it gives you a fantastic resistance high resistance to H2SO4 
when it is dilute, but uh, if it is strong H2SO4 high resistance to of course, E C in H2SO4 a dilute H2SO4, but if it is a strong H2SO4 then it gives you a low resistance. In fact, erosion corrosion would be much faster if it is a strong H2SO4 uh, to E C. Fine. So, now why it happens because in this particular case in this particular case P B S O 4. So, that forms which actually protects, but in this case this one dissolves and protection is lost. is lost and remember this is only in terms of flowing system. Okay. So, this is one example that depending on uh, the type of metals and type of uh, film uh, we can have different react different uh, sort of protection to uh, erosion corrosion. So, there are other factors uh, as well as characteristics. Now, as we see that uh, from the characteristics part of it we have seen that it is a very accelerated attack erosion corrosion and uh, it has a directional nature and uh, uh, other uh, important aspect what I have said that uh, uh, if it reduces corrosion then it should not be falling under erosion corrosion. That means, for erosion corrosion is always that factor which is basically aggressive attack of the surface due to erosion plus corrosion effect. And finally, we uh, uh, talked about uh, uh, the effect of uh, different metals, uh, one metal could be soft metal, hard metal and then passive metal, non passive metal. So, those are the factors coming into picture. Now, we talked about velocity. So, let us see what is the velocity factor that does. So, now if we talk about velocity. Now, uh, uh, as per the data as you, you could find it in uh, the book uh, by Fontana and Green, uh, this is corrosion engineering, they have given the effect of velocity. Okay. Now, if the velocity is less, the corrosion, erosion corrosion effect is not that big, but once it reaches to certain value, uh, it is a sort of critical value the erosion of corrosion effect would be very, very high. Okay. So, for example, one set of data they have given uh, it is basically uh, in sea water in sea water. Okay. Uh, so, they have tried to measure the corrosion rate of different metal set alloys and in three condition when the speed is 1 feet per second when it is 4 feet per second and when is it is 27 feet per second. And in fact, how they, how was the where those speeds achieved? So, this is nothing but the tidal wave, tidal sea wave, tidal sea wave that is the kind of speed they have achieved. This is uh, uh, in uh, sea water flume. So, there they have achieved this and another one is uh, in sea water they have attached a rotating uh, disc So, that achieves that speed of around 27 feet per second. So, all are in sea water okay. and there they have found that uh, for example, if we consider carbon steel. when the speed is 1 feet per second it is 34 uh, MPY this is in uh, I think it is in MPY uh, just a minute I am sorry this corrosion rate is in uh, the corrosion rate is in uh, uh, corrosion rate 
MDD. MDD means milligram per decimeter square per day. So, this is the corrosion rate they have observed. This is 34 uh, in, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a medium where it is moving at a speed of 1 feet per second for carbon steel. Then it is 72 when the speed becomes 4 feet per second and it becomes 254 when it is 27 per feet per second. So, this is the kind of increase in corrosion rate observed in case of uh, the increase in speed and you could see that till 4 feet it is not much of increase, uh, but once it reaches to 27 there is a quite a lot of increase. Now, uh, if we consider uh, silicon bronze, so that time this 1 feet per second the uh, corrosion rate is 1 MDD and then uh, it is 2 MDD when it is 4 feet per second and it becomes uh, quite a jump 350. Uh, 343 MDD. So, that is the kind of increase in uh, erosion corrosion that happens once the speed increases beyond a critical limit. And as we are st I, as I was giving an example of titanium, if you consider titanium, it has a very, very minimal effect uh, towards erosion corrosion. Uh, it is almost 0 and here also it is almost 0. Uh, this the entire speed range, uh, the titanium gives you the best resistance, even stainless steel 316 stainless steel also gives a quite a good uh, resistance to uh, erosion corrosion. Uh, so, this is let us say 1 and it is also one kind of uh, value one can get in that medium in sea water medium. So, this is the uh, effect of velocity. So, uh, it does not happen if it is a small change in velocity, but it happens aggressively when there is a critical speed achieved. So, this is the effect of velocity fine and interestingly this uh, because of this factor uh, depending on the metal part. So, you could see there are other mentions there are several men metal mentioned for example, cupric nickel 90, uh, 10 copper nickel, 70, 30 copper nickel those kind of metals have also been noted in that table you can just go to that particular book and see that particular table. So, it actually indicates the velocity has a great effect towards that. And remember the increase in velocity uh, might be helpful in reducing corrosion. Okay? It is not that all the time velocity would have uh, effect on bad effect on corrosion. For example, if we if we recall a mixed potential theory, uh, there uh, if it is uh, if the metal is uh, the metal corrosion is controlled by diffusion mode. So, that time this is potential this is log i which is uh, uh, the plot would be corrosion let us say this is this is the kind of uh, attack that happens let us say this is the metal dissolution part metal minus 2 equal to metal plus 2 the anodic part. So, this is the cathodic part let us say which is guided by oxygen diffusion So, the diffusion of oxygen guides that particular uh, corrosion rate and this is I L limiting current density. Now, if we increase the speed uh, and then check the uh, way uh, this I L changes with the increase in speed I L increases. So, this curve will come in like this. Okay. So, these are the kind of different I L. So, now we have given uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and you could see that this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5. So, now uh, till 3 uh, we have effect of the increase in speed. So, now if we plot corrosion rate versus speed, okay, 
now it goes like this and then becomes constant because once it crosses this speed i l 3 whatever speed you have uh, you go for uh, your i l is not the i l part is not cutting that straight line part that that steep uh, uh, parallel line with respect to potential axis is not cutting the anodic line of metal dissolution. So, there itself it stops. So, this is basically point corresponding to uh, speed 3. Okay. So, and beyond that as you increase the speed the I L is increasing, but it does not affect the dissolution character because the anodic line is not cutting on those uh, concentration polarization part. So, that is what the corrosion rate remains constant. So, this is one effect, but corrosion rate can also reduce due to increase in speed. Uh, those examples are like related to peating or crevice. So, their increase in speed would reduce so, these factors would reduce, okay. pitting effect and crevice effect would reduce. Now, uh, increase in speed can also reduce corrosion. Let us say if we add inhibitor and that inhibitor can actually go to the intricate sections of the metal, metal surface and will have inhibiting effect of the entire surface. So, that factor can also reduce the corrosion. So, it is not necessary that all the time increase in speed can uh, increase the corrosion that can reduce the corrosion also. So, now this is about speed. Now, there are other factors like impingement, uh, there will be factors like galvanic effect. So, those factors let me just uh, uh, mention those factors. We have already discussed some of the factors like factors affecting erosion corrosion. So, this one is surface film. We have already seen a uh, couple of examples like in case of lead, in case of copper, in case of brass that can affect the erosion corrosion. Second is velocity. We have seen that if we untain unless we reach to a critical value, uh, it can uh, lead to uh, until it can it can it cannot lead to a aggressive erosion corrosion, but once it reaches the critical value velocity value, the erosion corrosion would be very fast, the rate of erosion corrosion would be very fast. Third is uh, of course, turbulence, fine. So, we have talked about velocity and surface film. Now, if we talk about turbulence, the turbulence factor would be felt. For example, if we have a large segment pipe and then we have a, a small pipe which is coming like this. So, if this is the situation, a uh, large uh, pipe the flow is coming and then through a small pipe if the flow is directed. Now, in this portion we have lot of turbulence, fine. So, there uh, the erosion corrosion effect would be very fast. Of course, that factor will be felt around this zone. If we go away from this then the erosion corrosion factor would be less because after entering into that small pipeline, it will attain laminar flow after a short distance. So, that within the short section where that change in uh, orifice or change in diameter takes place, there it happens more. Okay. So, that is what this is basically the turbulence effect. In fact, if we have a pipeline where the pipeline is having a kind of uh, kind of dip in that this is a defect of that pipeline it is not smooth and if this is my uh, let us say pipe thickness this zone 
this journey if we uh, draw it in a, in a zoom it and then see this. So, this is like this. Okay. Now, here we have water flow or the fluid flow is going through this and here we have a kind of turbulence. Okay. So, this turbulence will have a greater corrosion, erosion corrosion here in this portion greater erosion corrosion. erosion corrosion and that would actually since in this part we have the lowest thickness. So, that particular part can get leaked. So, this part can leak, leakage can happen. So, this is uh, one of the uh, situations that can be experienced due to the turbulence factor. Of course, then fourth is impingement. Impingement is also important in the sense for example, uh, if we have a pipe design like this. Let us say a slurry is moving, we have already explained in previous lecture. So, that slurry is actually impinging on the this particular surface before it is going because there is a sharp change in uh, direction. Okay. So, that change lead to a impingement at this zone and in this zone and this zone can have high degree of high degree of erosion corrosion fine. So, uh, in this portion there could be a possibility of leakage also. Okay. So, this is the impingement factor. In fact, this impingement factor can be more if it is like this, if it is like this. This impingement factor here, if we compare the impingement factor, in this case it will be more, in this case it will be less. So, here it is much sharper change in velocity and here is a gradual change in uh, sorry not much sharper change in direction, but here is a gradual change in direction. So, that is what the impingement would be less in this case more would this in this case. So, here leakage tendon should be more. So, in fact that is what erosion corrosion can be controlled to a great extent if we modify the design without changing the material if we modify. For example, this is the typical modification we, we take care. Uh, in order to it is done in order to take care uh, this impingement factor as well as erosion corrosion. So, this is a better design, better design this is a bad design. Okay. So, we will talk about this design factor uh, because uh, by simply changing design without changing material or condition we can achieve a great deal of uh, protection. Uh, towards erosion corrosion, in fact towards many other corrosion problems. So, uh, then finally of course, uh, we have uh, uh, metal uh, the galvanic effect. Galvanic effect is a factor for example, if we have let us say this is a passive layer fine and this is passive layer is broken somewhere. Now, this passive layer is broken at this zone. So, this passive layer is intact and this part is broken. Now, this will be anode, this will be cathode, this is also cathode. In fact, that time we have uh, that favorable condition for excessive galvanic attack in that exposed area because those passive layer other areas which is a large area and they are actually substrate for cathodic reaction and in order to supply electrons a uh, greater degree of uh, dissolution should take place in that exposed area before the passivity again appears. So, this is one of the typical galvanic effect in fact, uh, there is a galvanic effect that is mentioned in the book uh, uh, by Fontana and Green where uh, 316 they have mentioned that 316 which is a very 
the which offers very high degree of resistance to erosion corrosion, but if it is connected to lead in the flow condition uh, where acid is kept. So, that time uh, it actually leads to uh, high degree of erosion corrosion, but if lead and uh, iron that T16 is uh, connected uh, uh, in a stagnant condition in H2SO4 medium, it does not uh, that corrosion effect would be less on 316, but when it flows, uh, so this is the effect. So, for example, 316 SS and lead. So, at a high and this is whole H2SO4. So, this is the acid. Now, high flow, okay. So, uh, galvanic effect would lead to high degree of attack on 316 SS and this attack is basically erosion corrosion and that erosion corrosion is enhanced. Of course, the speed is one factor, the other factor is of course, uh, connected to lead galvanic coupling to lead. So, this is the effect of galvanic uh, galvanic uh, situation uh, where two metal contacts are there. Now, uh, sixth is of course, metals and alloys. Uh, as we have seen from the table itself that uh, stainless steel and titanium provides a very good uh, erosion corrosion resistance, whereas carbon steel is poor resistant. Now, recently it has been observed that uh, we have many microstructures in, uh, uh, in uh, carbon steel itself. Okay. On the metals and alloys part, uh, uh, the microstructure also plays a big role in uh, combating erosion corrosion, which makes the metal soft, erosion corrosion rate would be very high. Now, uh, on the metals and alloys, we have talked about hard metal, soft metal and then of course, passivating as well as non passivating kind. Fine. Uh, uh, when we talk about this hard metal, so the hard metal and soft metal, uh, it can come from uh, different metals, different compositions as well as different microstructures in a same composition. Fine. So, uh, uh, if I what do I mean by microstructures in a same composition like let us say steel, let us say carbon steel. If we talk about carbon steel, that can have soft microstructures like uh, ferrite, uh, like uh, uh, alpha perlite combination or ferrite perlite combination. We can have martensite. So, this is ferrite perlite. This is martensite, there could be tempered martensite, like that way you can generate several microstructures in a single composition politic, sing, single composition carbon steel. For example, uh, if we can generate uh, let us say uh, 0 0.7 percent carbon steel or let us say near eutectoid steel, uh, you can generate this is a typical paralytic microstructure. So, this paralytic microstructure can be made uh, coarse 
fine very fine and that would lead to a different degrees of hardness this would be soft compared to all three this will be harder this will be hardest and depending on that erosion corrosion rate would also be different okay on that particular composition factor uh, of course for example uh, we have given an example like 316 and 304 so and also let us say carbon steel if we compare this is also steel this is also steel so if we compare between this two segment and this one these two will have definitely much higher degree of erosion corrosion resistance compared to carbon steel. So, this is on the factor of composition like uh, different metals uh, can also have a different uh, degree of erosion corrosion like titanium has the best resistance uh, then followed by 316 like that way uh, metals can have uh, depending on the composition or character uh, can have different erosion corrosion resistance. But the microstructures also uh, microstructures also play a big role. Now, as I have talked here, so on this we have done one small study. So, let us check that particular study uh, results. This paper one can go and check. So, this is the paper one can go and check. This is the paper by uh, paper in our lab. Now, this uh, this is a typical rail steel, okay, the Indian rail steel. So, Indian rail steel this is as received condition and then we have uh, done few modification. Uh, modification is that steel sample was kept in a furnace and we did a furnace cooling, then we did air cooling that means after taking it to the oxygenization condition, we kept it outside furnace in the open air and then it cools down that time one structure develops and then in one case we have uh, uh, forced air cool that means uh, after taking the sample out we have uh, kept it in front of a moving fan uh, so that time it is basically forced air cool so we have different degrees of fineness of structures but in all the cases mostly politic okay so this is as received as received that means the rail is cut into pieces and that microstructure is shown here so, this is this particular part, this one, so this one and this one. So, these two are basically uh, furnace cooled. Furnace cooled. So, this one and this one, they are they are air cooled. And if we consider if we consider this and this, so this is forced air cool. And you could see the fineness gradually the interlamellar spacing. So, these are interlamellar spacing. So, this is the cementite lamellae and this is the ferrite lamellae. So, those spacing is actually coming closer and closer and then in case of forced air cool it is the closest. And in fact, if we compare the hardness. So, this is if we compare between this, this and this. So, this is softest, this is uh, hard and this is the hardest, most hard material. Now, we try to see uh, erosion factor. This is MD is basically mean depth erosion and MDER mean depth uh, erosion rate. Okay. So, these are the two factors we try to see as a function of time and this time erosion factor we are actually having a, a, a ultrasonicator which is a which is a pin this is a pin which creates ultrasonic waves and that falls on a metal surface and that way we try to create damage on that it is a basically a typical cavitation mode and of course, we have seen the cavitation is nothing but uh, erosion corrosion. So, we could see that uh, when it is forced air cool uh, that gives you the best resistance okay and uh, uh, and if we consider uh, the air cooled one air cooled gives you uh, the next best is a better one 
and then compared to uh, the furnace cool is giving the poor erosion corrosion resistance uh, or erosion, poor cavitation resistance. So, all the cases is basically the erosion factor is involved. Now, we could see that as the fineness of the perlite colony interlamellar spacing is 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 increasing that means, it becomes more close by those perlite cementite lamellae it gives you the best resistance to cavitation damage or simply erosion damage. So, this is one typical data I have sh I am ju I am just uh, I thought that I should share with you because uh, this actually gives a sense that yes microstructure plays a big role. In fact, we have data where uh, one uh, around 0.2 percent carbon steel and 0.4 percent carbon steel both are found as cooled and that is the composition effect. Uh, the 0.2 percent carbon steel gives you the poor erosion corrosion resistance, uh, whereas 0.4 percent carbon steel gives you the higher erosion corrosion resistance because 0.4 percent contain more perlite compared to 0.2 percent carbon steel. So, that is what it becomes much harder and it prevents erosion effect. Okay. So, that is what that 0.4 percent gives you a better resistance. In fact, we have also seen with respect to Martin City as well as tempered martensitic, we saw that the tempered martensitic steel gives you the best resistance. Now, here all not only hard material is important, the hard material as well as its toughness more rather rather more important is the toughness more would be the tough that means, hardness as well as malleability both are there then it gives you the uh, one of the best situations uh, where erosion corrosion resistance would be extremely good. So, this is one such example I just thought that let me share uh, the data what we have received uh, and uh, erosion corrosion factor. In fact, if we see this set of microstructure and this set of microstructures they are both are uh, one is at a low magnification and one is at a higher magnification otherwise there is no difference fine. So, the left side images are uh, low magnification and right side images are high magnification and all are ACM images or scanning electron microscope images. Fine. So, let me get back to we were now uh, this is the uh, part we were talking about that uh, metals and alloys depending on composition, depending on microstructures uh, that they can give a varied degree of erosion corrosion resistance. So, these are the kind of factors uh, uh, general factors that are associated with erosion corrosion. Uh, now, we will in the next class we will talk about cavitation and fretting corrosion. So, then we will end erosion corrosion. So, till then uh, let me stop here, uh, we will continue discussing two special uh, erosion corrosion uh, modes, one is cavitation, one is fretting in our next lecture. Thank you.